Hello ladies and gents and welcome back to another Pro Evolution Soccer 2021 bit of news or a bit of an interview with Robbie Ron on this blog here by Fernando. I have no idea what his surname is so I'm not even going to have a attempt at that right there but Robbie is this guy here so he is the brand manager for Latin America. I will leave a link in the description below so you can read the article yourself in your own leisure but I'm just going to run through this right now. So is it a coincidence that I did an int the interview for the 25th anniversary of Pro Evolution Soccer? And uh, Robbie goes on to say, yes, we are happy because we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of PES today. So many years have passed and how many more we will have in the future. Just remember, this was converted from Spanish, so some of the English is going to be a little bit off because we you know what Google Translate's like. The immediate future is eFootball PES 2021 season update, an announcement that has left many doubts in the players since many are not clear if this is an expansion of PES 2020 or is it a new game. What is eFootball PES 2021 season update? He goes on to say it is a new game, it is a new version, it is a new season of PES. It has been given the name season update for several reasons. One, and the main reason, is that the brand has decided with the departure of the new consoles to change engines from Fox Engine to Unreal Engine and to start making a change tremendous to what is the Pez Saga. So to save that time, we put aside a little what is the Pez 2021 and do a season update. There are improvements, but it's not a totally new game compared to Pez 2020. We want to be honest with our followers, our fans, and tell them that it is not a completely new game to the previous version. So it's called a season update. Okay, so in the next few questions, he's going to clarify what that actually means, and then I'll talk about it. So then to clarify any doubts, we are facing an independent release that is sold separately. You don't need to have PES 2020 to access the game. So it's a standalone game. So he goes on to say, not at all. You don't need the previous version at all. What's more, for those with the PES 2020 version, no data is transferred to the new game. It does not mean that the Master League continues where you left off or that the My Club teams will transfer. So importantly here, you know, it is a standalone game. Your Master League will not transfer and your My Club team will not transfer. My Club is reset. On September the 15th, we all start from scratch. It is from scratch because it is a new game. The truth is that the confusion, I think, has been due to the name. To put season update, many people thought it was download content, which added to the current version, but it is not. It is a totally different game. So again, it goes on to say that, you know, if you are starting my club, you lose all your players. You have to start from scratch like everyone else. But it maintains the playability and PES 2020 graphics. Correct. On that subject, we are very clear. If we talk about the gameplay itself, it is 99.9% .9 the same as PES 2020. And other types of changes will make it a different version. But they are minimal. Hence the name Season Update. It is the basis of PES 2020, but it does not mean that it is the same game. It is a separate game. So... Here he is clarifying that it is exactly the same. Maybe for the sort of that 0.1% is where they put the data packs in and the gameplay tweaks and I do the reviews, you know, as usual. So it looks like they're still going to tweak the gameplay to keep it fresh, to keep it changing, uh, possibly listening to feedback. and But clearly their dev focus is going to be on PES 2022, I'd imagine. So... You know, we, we'll see, um, I imagine, a few gameplay changes. But we'll just have to wait and see. And I will be doing the data pack reviews as they are released. And I will be doing a season, well, the season update review as well. So PES 2021 gameplay season update. Let you guys know if there's anything changing. So be sure to stay tuned for that. But let's continue. So because there are two different games, PES 2020 users will not be able to play online with PES 2021, for example. Correct. They are online systems, totally separate. So if you're on PES 2020, you can't play someone on PES 2021 and vice versa. 
It has already been announced that PES lost the Inter and Milan licenses, so they no longer be in PES 2021. Are they the only casualties? Among the bigger teams, unfortunately, we had to stop doing without them, Inter and Milan. And so far as far as I know, there is no other change. They would be the only two. Of course, we will have announcements from other partner teams that will join at PES 2021. So interestingly, um, it doesn't look like there's going to be any more other teams dropping out in terms of licenses. Obviously, that can change um, with exclusives, etc. That EA may, may snap up, similar to what they did with uh, Juventus. But it looks like there may be the possibility that we might see other partner teams join PES 2021, the season update. Speaking specifically about Peru, will Universitario de Deportes, Allianz Lima, Sporting Cristal and Sports Boys continue? We continue with the same clubs which we have had alliance alliance for several years. They are maintained in this version of PES, all four remain. Okay, so for those Peru fans like that. And the Peruvian national team, of course, the Peruvian selection also remains. Peru has become, in recent years, a very important country in terms of ESP. We already know that they were very good players and that they were very good talents for esports competitions, but in the consumer sales ranking, they are lately very high. The truth is that the support of the community of the Peruvian fans has increased quite a bit and they have managed it. Not only in going out to publish that Peru plays Pez, but also in ratifying it on the subject of the sales. That is very important to us. You have to see in the future how you can improve and get many more clubs and why not dream of having the Peruvian league. Since we we're talking about Peru some time ago, a rumor arose that the mon monumental stadium of Universo de Deportes could be included in the saga where the final of the last Copa Lopetadores was played. It is a rumour that always takes strength and internally we have thought about it several times but for this PES 2021 it will not be possible due to the focus of the season update. Is It is better to put it aside for now and wait for the future. Take me out of a doubt. Was this season update format planned in advance or was this the decision made in the face of COVID-19 pandemic? It was planned in advance. COVID did us little harm. COVID affects us like all of us since we had to close and work from home. Interesting. So, you know, the season update wasn't affected or, or you know, this wasn't, you know, COVID wasn't a reason why they were going to do the season update. This was all planned in advance. Interesting. Will there be a demo of PES 2020? For the first time, we will not have a demo by already announcing the game. PES 2021 has the same gameplay as PES 2020. The demos are taken out to show the gameplay changes by maintaining, maintaining the gameplay of PES 2020. The team decided to avoid releasing another demo. It is a job to cut part of the game to make it a demo and launch it. Since everyone is already playing PES 2020 and the gameplay is 99. 9% the same so the truth is that it is not necessary this year to have a demo and we are just waiting to go to launch okay so no demo for PES 2021 and that kind of makes sense really I mean what's the point um, when they could just download the PES 2020 demo which I have done and I will be doing a year review of the demo to sort of compare how the demo fares to the full game and see if they bridge the gap with all the data packs because it's been a while since I last played the demo, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Let's talk about PES 2022. A new start in the saga with a new engine and therefore with many new graphics and playable. Yes, the truth is the idea. We have been working with the Unreal Engine for a long time on mobile, in the mobile version of PES, and we wanted to make the leap on to the new consoles. So we start in this new generation. The team did not want to release a version, let's say a demo in the first year, and they wanted to take another year of work to give a good product to the people of PES who deserve it. We really want to see the difference. Will PES 2022 have the same launch window or is there a possibility that it will go ahead? It will re 
be released on the same dates. We're talking about maintaining the same launch format every year. I think that is the idea because that is when football seasons in Europe start. So looking around August, September, release date for PES 2022. As PES 2022 is a next-gen game with a new engine and gameplay, will there be versions for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One? It is something that has not yet been announced, but I really believe that it is some, it's not something that can be left, especially our region, which has taken always taken a little more time to advance on the issue of consoles. Let's be honest, not many of us are lucky to have a next-gen console. We don't talk on the first day of release, but in the year of release, I think it would be good to continue with the last generation of consoles as we did in other generation changes. Let's wait for the announcements when we're ready, but the idea is to stay on those consoles. Interesting. So part of me worries about that, but part of me thinks I can't imagine they're going to release it for the old consoles as well, unless it's like a ported dumbed down version because just wouldn't be able to handle it. Is there the possibility of watching the Pez Saga on Nintendo Switch? I think we are closer to that. The Unreal Engine will help us to be a little bit more flex flexible on what platforms we appear on. I can't assure you yet, but I think we're getting closer to getting there, to Switch. Whenever we announce a new game, people let us know that they are still waiting for the Switch version. It is something we want because people ask us and there are many consumers who have stopped playing PES just because we are not on the platform. We are focused on seeing how we can do it. And I think that the change of engine will help us a lot fulfill the dream up to several Nintendo fans. A couple of years ago, you told me about the possibility of a re retro launch on Switch. Now that we have a Nintendo Switch online service with the reruns of Super Nintendo Classics, will it be possible to see International Superstar Soccer back? Yes. I tell you about that topic. When I told you from a retro release, it wasn't just for answering a question. I internally probed about the possibility because I'm a big fan of the International Superstar Soccer Saga. And for me, it'd be great to have it back again. And if it's Switch, better because I grew up playing Nintendo. But when we asked the production team internally if it's possible or not, I found something that surprised me. The team that made International Superstar Soccer is totally different team from what Pez does yeah I'll ex touch on that in a bit the truth that surprised me and they said that it is difficult because it is something that belongs to someone else I ran into that I'm not saying it can never happen but you have to look at who was working at that time in the game in that game and see how we can resurrect it it surprised me it's an antidote but hopefully we can have it for us older people, we would like to have something more retro. And he goes on to say, thank you very much, Robbie, for the interview and happy 25th anniversary of Pez. So just going back to this one here, it's interesting that they tried to bring ISS back to the Switch. I wasn't aware of that. But obviously a lot of the development team, the programmers have left now. Even uh, Seabass, I think, uh, left in 2018. He was a programmer back in ISS days and he sort of moved up to director during that sort of transition period. But yeah, interesting. Anyway, that is all for me, ladies and gents. Hope you enjoyed the interview uh, brought to you by this website. I will be, like I said, I'll be posting that link in the description below. Thanks for joining me, ladies and gents, and I look forward to seeing you in my future videos. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.